Yo, what's good with y'all? Merry Christmas, you know what I'm saying? Before I even start up the video, Merry Christmas to everybody. And of course, if you celebrate and stuff, Merry Christmas. This video should be dropping on Monday, so it should be dropping on Christmas. But anyway, um, yes, Merry Christmas. Hope everybody has a blessed, you know, blessed good day. Hope everyone got, you know what I'm saying, gifts they wanted, everything, spending time with the family, friends, and all that. And stuff. Thank you guys for all the love and support I've shown on my channel. I greatly appreciate it. By the time this video is coming out, I'm pretty sure I'll be at like halfway to 5,000. So let's keep going on with the 5,000. You guys have been killing it with the support. I've been getting a lot of subscribers, a lot more comments. People join the Discord server. The Discord server is also like 500 away from 2,000 members and stuff. You guys should definitely join. Link is in the description. And yeah, thank you guys for all the love and support you guys. Michonne, like I said, hope you guys have a great Christmas. And let's get straight into the video. Okay, so as you can tell by the title, I'm starting another series. How to make Jujutsu, a Jujutsu Kaisen game. I did a poll on YouTube. Um, A lot of you guys said you wanted it. As I would expect, so I've made JJK ability, so I already have a lot of combat stuff ready to go. Um, this will be part one, as you can tell, part one of a series. Uh, I'm really covering just the basics here, like just really setting up the main UI. You know, the main menu, play, um, like the play button. I set up a clan spin system, so you could spin to receive a clan. It's not like a hundred percent done, but it's just generally like how you spin for a clan. I'm gonna set up like saving. You know how many spins you have left, and you know all that. Um, I'm modeling the game off of a Jujutsu Kaisen game I believe was popular last year or earlier this year called Kaisen. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard of it before. And stuff. So I'm like, I just what I usually do. Like I model the One Piece game off of blue off of Blocks Fruits. Model the Battlegrounds game off of obviously the strongest Battlegrounds. So this I'm modeling it after Kaisen. So yeah, but yeah, if you guys want part two and want to continue the series, just leave a like on the video, show us some love, let me know in the comments. But let's get straight into it. Okay, so first things first. Wait one second, guys. All right, my fault. Okay, so first things first, let's set up just a few prerequisites. Let's yeah, let's get a few stuff set up. Uh, set up uh prior to getting to the scripting. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the UI stuff, and then get to the uh what, what is it called. And then get to the scripts. So I'm going to insert a remote event into replicated stars. Let's go ahead and knock this out. This is going to be our core event. If you guys watched my how to make a blocks, you know, block process one piece game, or if you watched the battleground series, you'll notice very similar scripting. You know, just a little, you know, just to be a little different. But yeah. So once we once we have our remote event done right, we're going to then head on over to starter GUI, insert our screen GUI. This will be our main GUI. So um, by default, I want you to have it set enabled. You want to and you also you want to also check ignore GUI inset, and then you want to disable reset on spawn. And then you're gonna rename it to core GUI, right? Then you're going to insert. You're gonna insert really three frames. So you could really duplicate this. So Control D, Control D, right? For the first frame, you're gonna to want to name it main menu frame. This is gonna be like you know where the play button is, the clan. So if a player wants to play the game, play boom after the loading. I'm also gonna have a load. I'm also gonna have a loading screen, right? So for the main menu, I'll also show you guys the properties I set it to position and sizing wise, but but just to let you guys know, it's completely up to you guys for the colors, the position, the sizing, the fonts, whatever. That's completely up to you guys. I'm just showing you guys how I did it. So for positioning, I left it, I left it as the default. For sizing, I simply did two comma zero comma two comma zero, so it you know covers up the entire screen. Um, for the main menu frame, uh, for the background color, I went with red, but it's up to, like I said, it's completely up to you guys. So I went with red, right? Um, you want it to, you want it to not be visible. So make sure visible is not checked for it. Moving on to the second frame, we have the loading frame. This is, you know, the loading screen. So we're going to call it loading frame, you know, rename to that. As for the properties, uh, it's literally the exact same thing actually as what we just did with the main menu frame. So just do two comma zero comma two comma zero boom right. It's gonna cover up the entire screen. Uh, I made this a dark, a kind of dark gray. It's usually what most loading screen colors are like, right? Then inside, I mean, then for the third frame, you're gonna name this roll frame. This is the uh, what's it called? You know, the clan rolling thing, right? Um, so for roll. This is a little different for position. You're going to set the position to for this. You're going to say zero comma zero comma zero and then zero comma two hundred, right? And then for the sizing, I went with two hundred. I went with uh zero two hundred zero two hundred. That's what I went with, right? But again, completely up to you guys. Uh, just like what we do with the main menu frame, you want this to not be visible by default, right? We're gonna get into it. So then for the main menu frame, I'm going to go uh, frame by frame and then we're going to add everything we need to do. So in customize everything. So I'm going to insert a text button into the frame. I'm going to name this uh, play text button, right? 
I'm gonna name it play text button. We could do some customization with it. Uh, so for the play text button, mm, let's see, let's see. So I can't see it as you guys could clearly tell. Uh, what I would recommend doing is like setting uh one thing visible and setting another thing like not visible. Okay, that may be a little confusing. The point is when you're done customizing, you want the loading frame to be visible, and you want you don't want the main menu frame to be visible right so pretty much so pretty much what we're gonna do is i'm just making the main menu frame visible so i can just simply customize the play text button so we can just see it better right so i'm gonna just move mine here i'm gonna insert a ui corner this is optional you don't have to do this but just to generally make it look nicer i'm gonna set it to 15 right so take out the corners and put it like you know kind of the top left right and i'm gonna rename that to play text button as for the customization i'm gonna make it like a light blue you know the color of the cursed energy I'm gonna set the text to bold and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with that font. I'm going to set the text to, of course, play, right? Then rich text. Um, you guys already know. Oh, sorry, not wrap text. Scale text, right? And then I'm gonna, of course, set the font because that just looks kind of crazy. Not gonna lie. So we can set it. To, yeah, we can set it to like maybe we can set it to like white, right? Or would this? Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's set the text color to white into the text stroke to black. That looks better. That looks much better, right? Now, I know the colors may, may look a little off, like blue with red, but again, up to you guys. I don't I do not do UI. I'm just showing you guys how to do it, right? So then we're going to duplicate this. So control D, boom, right? You're going to drag it right under it. And then you're going to rename this to clan spin button. So for this, you're going to do, let's go down, clan spin text button, right? Then I'm going to rename the text to clan spins, right? And then, like I said, I'm modeling it right after uh, Kaizen. Yeah, the, the Kaizen game. And then uh, once you change the text and the name, then just that we are done with the main menu frame, right? So once you're done with the main menu frame, you guys can set it back to not visible. And then, of course, we can move to the loading frame. So you can set this to visible. So for the loading frame, um, you should be just going to have a text label. So we can insert a text label. You guys can name this text label loading text label right um the positioning i went with was let's see so i did 0 0.048 comma zero comma zero comma or sorry, sorry. then i did 0 0.386 comma zero boom so right there right now as for size i did zero comma and then i did we can see like 400 if pointer is good and then for y i did 130 right boom right and then of course we're going to make the background well you it's your choice if you want to have the background uh if you want to have a background color it's, it's up to you but i'm setting the background transparency equal to one i'm going to same thing i did did with the uh text labels rich text scale the text and you're going to put loading right I that, that but we're going to control the read the script so you could just set the, you could set it to this by default right so loading i went with a uh, light blue once again and then of course this time i went with just blue and black right so it's right there i know you can't really see it because the output menu but yeah that's what it looks like right so once we finish that loading text label we set the text and everything right and bold and everything then i'm going to move to the roll frame so i'm going to insert a text button right and i'm going to name this i'm going to name this roll text button right then we're going to put this or actually hold on, let's do the same thing we did before so set the loading frame to not visible set the roll frame to visible so we just so we could just generally see what we're working with here okay so once you've inserted the roll text button right you're going to want to actually put drop this down like down here because you want the spin button here and then you want the text label up there so we can put it like at the bottom you know if you want but you can really set the roll frame uh background transparency equal to one not, not really a need for it um and then I'm going to uh, let's see how I do this. I don't want to do this. Um, we can say roll. We can say roll text button. We can say like roll text button. Background color is like I guess maybe like a light blue or no. Let's make, let's make it like a green. So roll text button is like green. Uh, I'm gonna copy the UI corner thing or duplicate it, and I'm gonna throw it in there too. For the button right, and then we're gonna set the text same thing as before, guys. For the one, and then uh, spin. Uh, click to spin click to spin for a clan right 
Then of course I'm gonna change the text color because it's you know it's a little uh what's it called? A little too dark. You know what I'm saying? For since it's already a bright color, so let's make it like actually I think leaving it as black will but yeah there we go. It it balances it makes like a nice episode. One second guys. I bet. Okay, so once we finish that, we finish the roll text one. I believe I'm just trying to make sure I'm not. Yeah, I'm not forgetting anything. But anyway, moving on. Last UI thing we have to do is insert a text label. This is going to be what the clan. So we can just drag it a little bit above. It's going to be what our uh, thing is. So for the text label, right? You're going to you know same thing, bold, rich, scale. Then for the text, you know, going to do uh, what's it called? I'm going to set the text to, let's see, uh, what did I, I honestly forgot what I said, I honestly forgot what I said it to, I think clan, I think, I think that's what I said it to, but it doesn't really matter, and then I'm going to, uh, you know, duplicate UI corner, throw it in there, I'm going to rename this to role text label, so, text label, I think I did this wrong, but we will know soon enough, then I'm going to just make the color light blue, once again, I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to do like the same thing, right? Keep it like a, you know, a pattern going. Um, you know, I guess we'll do it just the same for both, right? Boom. So just like that, we have we have a row frame set up. So just like just like I said, you're gonna set you're gonna make sure it's not visible, right? Then I'm going to set the loading frame visible. Once again, make sure menu frame and roll frame are not visible, and then set loading frame visible so we can see loading frame, right? Then Oh, uh, just that we're done with all the UI, so now we can get to the scripting. So once you're done with all that, we can insert a local script. Head on over to Stutter Player, open that up, go to Stutter Player Script, insert a local script. So let me just double check. Okay, I'm good. So I'm doing great on timing because I don't because I don't want to spend too much time, you know, on the UI. So we're gonna go ahead and insert a local script. We're gonna name this core script local, as you guys can imagine. This is gonna handle all of our core stuff for the game. If you don't understand what core means, it's basically like the basic things when you join the game. You know, like settings main menu um setting the main menu play uh ui display you know like when we when we add stats you know health cursed energy abilities and stuff like that then we're gonna have a combat module script that handles all the combat which will be i'll probably set all that stuff up in part two since that's easier for me to set up in all honesty because i already have like i have like six jujutsu kaisen abilities already made from previous videos so that'll be easy so we can delete this and then we can get the twin service so local ts is equal to game get service twin service right mm, yeah that's better then i'm going to get the core event so local core event game that replicated story for child core event then i'm going to get the local player so local player is equal to game that players that local player then i'm going to use a for loop i'm going to say for i is equal to one comma four comma one enter right and then here i'm going to set up a loading thing so you guys can change this number how many times you wanted to um this pretty much is how many seconds is really gonna well kind of it's, it's kind of how many seconds um so it's roughly about half of whatever this uh number is pretty much like this would be i think the loading time is about 1.5 to 2 it's like one and a half to two seconds i want to say and stuff so i'm going to say player dot oh sorry i forgot to actually get the core gui uh one more thing we need to get right here we're going to get the core gui so we're going to say local core gui is equal to player dot player gui wait for child core gui right then i'm going to say core gui dot player gui or sorry not core gui player gui core gui dot loading frame dot loading text label dot text is equal to quotation marks loading then you're going to put a you're going to put a dot right then enter, you're gonna put a space, you're gonna do task that wait 0.4 seconds. Now it's up to you guys for how long you want the, the second in between uh, when it changes the loading to uh, change. It's up to you guys. If you want it to be 0.2, do 0 0.2. It's completely up to you guys, but you do need to have a wait since it's a for loop. Or, well, no, not since it's a for loop. You do need to have a wait because you want, you want people to be like, okay, it is loading instead of it just looking like it's frozen, right? Or it's just changing constantly. So then we can, we can really just copy and paste the Sarah sometimes. So control C. Control V and then Control V, boom, all right. And then you're just gonna have this three times. Of course, you're just gonna add a dot, three dots, right? Then we're gonna add an, an if statement at the end. 
So you're going to say if i is equal to whatever your number is in the middle right here, right? So this is like the, the maximum. This is this is where it stopped the end point, the stopping point, whatever you want to call it. This is where it stops. It's going to go one, two, three, four, boom, stop. So once uh, i is equal to four, right? Once, let me pretty much once we're done, we're going to say local loading twin. We're going to set the twin up. Loading twin is equal to ts create. I'm going to say core GUI. Make sure you're doing core GUI, not core event, because I messed up a lot of times accidentally putting core events. So I'm going to say core GUI dot loading frame, comma, tween info dot new. So for me, I'm going to put the duration for 1.5 seconds, completely up to you guys for what you want to do. Then I'm going to say enum dot easing style dot linear, comma, enum dot easing direction dot out. Once again, completely up to you guys for what you want to do. Then I'm going to put a comma in between the parentheses. I'm going to create a table. So special brackets, create our property table. And then I'm going to set the size. I'm going to say size is equal to UDM2 dot new, right? Equal to two commas comma zero comma zero comma zero pretty much so it's gonna like it's gonna pretty much uh it's gonna like it's gonna like go this way like from the bottom to the top and stuff so it's gonna look like it's kind of closing in a sense right and then of course we need to place that twin then we just need to do a couple more things in the if statement so we're gonna add a task that weighs to task that wait 1.7 seconds so to calculate this time i'm simply just you want to add about just like a like a point a couple more seconds after whatever time you put here so if it's like if your time is like 2.3 then you would want to make this like 2.5 pretty much right but mess around with the wait times see whatever works best for you right then i'm going to say core gy dot loading frame the loading text label dot visible is equal to false. I'm gonna say core GUI dot main menu frame dot visible is equal to true so that the main menu frame will now be visible, right? Because we can't have them visible at the same time. They just wouldn't work. Then we can move on to um I mean to be fair, it's not it's not even a function, but we can move on to really setting up the functions. So I'm gonna say core, I'm gonna say core GUI, right? Core GUI dot core. Or sorry, not core frame. Um, dot roll frame. This is how we can roll uh for our races. You can see that roll text button. That mouse button one click connect function. Close parentheses. Enter. You're gonna say local count is equal to zero, right? And I'm gonna say while count is less than twenty. Again, this number is up to you guys. If you wanted to like, this is how many times it's gonna go through. So like, if you wanted to go through like 20, 20 uh clamp twenty spins, pretty much right. Not 20 spins like it's going to go through like 20 different options so since this is clan it's going to go through it's going to go through each clan 20 times until it lands on whatever one it chooses whichever one is randomized to if that makes sense right so enter and then i'm going to say core events fire server and i'm going to say in quotation marks i'm going to put clan roll right then i'm going to say count is plus equal to one right so we can increase it each time then i'm going to put a task that way so task that way again wait time is up to you guys but i'm gonna do 0 0.3 seconds and check that we're done with this function and i honestly just remembered i didn't set up the part where if you click the clans <laughs> I, I don't think i set up the part where if you click the uh, clan tech yeah i didn't set it up where if you click the clan text button it'll open up the clan menu uh um dang, that probably would be a good thing to set up i'm not gonna look um i'll set it up in part two i'll set it up in part two but it's fine so we're then going to move on to the to the next function. We got two more left, and they're honestly very short. So I'm going to say core event dot client events connect function right in parentheses. You're going to put event type comma arg one for argument number one, then enter. Then you're going to say if event type is equal to quotation marks, and you're going to put clan rule enter right. Then you're going to say local clan is equal to argument number one, and then you're going to say core gui sorry core gui dot rule frame dot roll text a roll text label that text is equal to clan okay so i was right so okay i did have it right then put a space dot dot, dot clan because then it'll be the name of the clan right then i'm going to uh set up the play text button function so i'm going to say core gui dot uh main menu frame dot play text button mouse button one click connect function close parentheses enter you're going to set up the first play tune. So we're going to say local play. Actually, let's save ourselves some time because tween, it's kind of a little bit to type. It's kind of a decent amount of type. So let's go up here and let's copy and paste this. So control C, control V, rename this to play tween, right? So control C, control V. You're simply going to change this just a little bit. You're going to change this to main menu frame. You're going to leave it the wait time to 1.5 linear out, right? Then over here, you're simply going to change this 
to uh size equal to oh sorry actually never mind we're gonna do we're actually leaving it the same i'll oh, change the name in the instance and then i'm gonna set up a for i loop for the text button so we can tween those as well so i'm gonna say for i comma v in pairs i'm gonna say core gy dot main menu frame right and then i'm going to say get children and i'm say enter do if v is a text button because that's the only thing i wish to be there except for text label text labels right then I'm gonna set up the tween, so I'm gonna paste once again. So control V. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna paste this once again. So control C, control V, change this to plain tween two, plain tween two. And then you're simply going to change this whole line to V, referring to the uh, text buttons, right? And then you're going to change this. So instead of changing the size, so instead of changing the size, you're going to uh, say, you're going to say, uh, let me delete this real quick, actually. You're going to say, background transparency is equal to one comma text transparency is equal to one right boom so that's what you're going to do there uh actually let's move this down here let's move this play between up. so delete that right i'm gonna copy it and then i'm gonna go after the for i loop you want it to you want to put it after the for i loop so they're kind of playing at the same time if that makes sense right and then just like that guys we have we have set up the uh what's it called we have finished everything on the local script the local script honestly was where's where like the majority of the scripting is like the server side it's just it's literally a little bit and stuff right so then we move into the server side right make sure you guys can okay so make sure i'm good i'm gonna insert a server script i wanted to honestly add more like finish the clan rolling system and stuff add abilities but then the video would have honestly probably been like 30 something to possibly 40 minutes long i didn't want the first one to be that long and stuff so that's why i was just uh, i'm gonna break it up and then do save all the stuff for part two so we're gonna rename this script core script in parentheses you can put server right we're going to delete print hello world like i said the script is very small it's sort of like it's literally 26 lines so first things first is get the core mode event we're going to say local core event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child core event boom then i'm going to set up the clan chances table so i'm going to say local clan chances remember we create a table by saying equal to special brackets you could do it like this you could say like clan one comma clan two but what i honestly would prefer to do because the thing is with this unless you have like just a couple it's gonna it's just gonna keep going like all the way down here so then you would like say if you had like a lot of stuff a lot of entries you would literally have to like kind of scroll through the look between but if that's what you prefer then by all means do that i personally prefer doing it like this special brackets um you're gonna put a space and then you're gonna do it like this so here's for the clans um i'm i just chose the four you're uh main clans that i really remember well no i had to search one up i know i remember zenin fushiguro and uh, gojo off the top of my head but not kamo because i'm just anime only so anyway so first things first i'm gonna say zenin so you're gonna put the name of the clan you're gonna say it's equal to then the chance of them getting it it's out of 100 by the way like we're gonna do uh math dot random random number between from one to 100 so zenin uh i mean i don't know if there's i don't know zenin like i don't really i'm not doing this like anime accuracy i know like i'm not making it so it's like it's exactly how like like how the gojo clan is extremely rare in the anime i'm not making it so it's like he's going to be exactly rare. it's not going to be the exact same as the anime i'm just throwing in clan names with numbers and you guys can adjust it however way you want it i'm going to say 70 semicolon enter then i'm going to say ushiguro is equal to 15 remember all these numbers need to e need to add up to equal 100 so gojo is equal to 10 uh, uh semicolon and lastly i'm gonna say comma is equal to five semicolon you guys see how they all they add up to equal 100 it's 15 plus 5 is 20 20 plus 10 is 30 30 plus 70 is 100. now we can set up the function so i'm gonna say core events on server events connect function right in parentheses you're going to put player comma event type enter then you're gonna say if event type is equal to quotation marks plan role enter you're going to say local random number is equal to math dot random. I'm doing it out of 100. I recommend you guys do it out of there too, right? So, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. not out of 100, out of 70, out of 70, sorry, out of 70. But at the same time, you do look, you do just want it to to all add up to equal 100. It's probably just for the best. Honestly, it's kind of complicated to explain how the random like randomizing system works. But anyway, so I'm gonna say one comma 70, right? So random number random number from one to, between one and 70 i'm gonna set up if statement i'm gonna say if random number is less than or equal to five then pretty much it's literally like like literally you only have one two three four five so it's a very low chance of you getting the combo fam i don't even know if that's rare or not so core events fire clients you're gonna fire make sure you do fire clients not fire all clients just fire clients 
So you're gonna send it back to the player in quotation marks. You're gonna put clan role, then you put the name of the clan after putting a comma. So you're gonna put comma, right? And then you're gonna do the same thing here. You're gonna say else. Then you can copy and paste this. So control C, control V, boom. And then you can just copy and paste this. Control C, control V, control V. You can do it as many times as many clans you have. So then for the second one, you're gonna change this to you're gonna change this to ten, and then we can change this to Gojo. Right, and for this, it's going to be 15, and then you're going to change this to Ushiguru, and then uh, for this one, change it to this one is actually this one is actually different. You want this to be greater than uh, you want this one greater than 16, very high, so it's a very uh, high chance of getting the Zenning plan, right? So Zenning and boom, just like that, guys. Like I said, it wasn't it literally was not that much really to do, honestly, here and stuff, but yeah um we can go ahead and move we can go ahead and wait, actually let me just make sure i think i did yeah, yeah i believe everything anyway we go to test to make sure everything works as always if you guys have access to any of my scripts or models you guys can come either a channel member or a discord subscriber link to either one of those options can be found in the description and stuff if you guys need help with anything any errors and stuff join my discord server link can be found in the description and create a post inside of the scripting support uh channel so as you guys see we're loading boom there it goes the loading screen oh but then you guys see it's a little you know low delay little delay in between but anyway um let's see so yeah so once we have that uh, obviously we probably should fix that but anyway so if I, so you guys see we have playing clan spins if i click play boom there we go they fade away and just that we are in our game um so like i said for the core menu uh i'm gonna need to add that uh end part too like so we can actually open up the the um clan menu and spin we we set up the spin system we just need to set it up so like uh we have this we have a function that triggers it to uh spin and randomize but yeah everything seems to work and everything so yeah like i said if you guys need help or anything just join my discord server create a post inside of the scripting support channel um me or one of my helpers will help you and stuff you guys should definitely join the discord server almost to 2000 members and stuff if you guys enjoyed the video leave like subscribe like i said if you guys want uh part two and just generally for me to continue this series leave a like leave a like if you enjoyed the video let me know in the comments and yeah i will see you guys next video thank y'all for watching